Hi, good morning and welcome to meditation. Today is the 29th of April. I would like to read in, in John chapter 6, verse 39 and 40. And we are talking about the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we are going to talk about the first and the sec second resurrection. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. We have talked about, about this text in another meditation about the second coming, because Jesus here is talking about the last day. The last day is the last day, the last day of history, the last day of this universe that is going to pass away. So this resurrection is the last one. So it is not the first one. Where is the first one? So the first one we would find in Ephesians, in, in Corinthians, in Romans, in Colossians, and in this, even in the book of John, in this book. In this text of Ephesians chapter 2, verse, verse 6, Paul says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with uh, him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. This is the first resurrection, when Jesus raised us up. He's talking to these Ephesians and saying that Jesus raised them up. And he's using the verb in the past. You don't even need to understand Greek to see that this is in the past. It is in the past. Interesting, because in the same chapter, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, Paul told those people that they were dead before they were raised up. They were dead. He was not saying that they were dead in their bodies, because otherwise, how? what was the point in sending them a letter? They wouldn't be able to read that letter. And you know probably that not everyone could have a, a copy of that book and read it. And read it. So the, the text was read to them in a, in a service, in a meeting somewhere. They couldn't hear the letter being re uh, written. They could uh, read. They couldn't uh, and, uh, read the letter if they were dead in, in their bodies. It was, it was actually their spirit that was separated from God. But God in Christ made them alive. That's the first resurrection. It is the same story in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Since then you have uh, been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So he is talking before, at the end, he's talking about the second one. But in the first, he's talking about, in the beginning of the, the chapter, he's talking about the first resurrection. Because he's saying, if you have been risen, if you, ha if, if you have been raised up, with Christ to a new life. So uh, set your hearts on things above. Search. Uh, set your minds on things above as well. Set your hearts. Set your minds on things above. Why? Because you are a new creation, as Paul says in the book of Corinthians. And Jesus, talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, is going to call it a birth from above. <laughs> from God, as John in his first letter says, that we have been born of God. So it's to, be, to be born of God is to be a, a new creation, is to be raised with Christ. Romans chapter 6 verse 4 is going actually to explain that. We were therefore buried, bu buried with him through baptism in death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. We live a new life because God raised us up with Christ. We were in a tomb, but now we are alive. That's the first resurrection. Do, uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 11 says, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living you, who uh, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. So here, here we go. The body will receive life as well because this body is going to die, is going to disappear. Your body is going to die, but God is going to give you 
a new body in at the last day, as John, Jesus said in John chapter uh, 6. John chapter 6. Yes. So I'm going to read now in Philipp Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. I wanted to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection. He, he wanted to know that power. So he's talking about the resurrection of Christ in him. And participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Can you see that Paul in this text, is, he talks about both. He's talking about a new life he's got in Christ and, and this expectation of the final resurrection from de death. Because every single enemy of God is going to be conquered. And as uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the last one to be conquered is going to be the death of, uh, of the body. Because the spiritual one has been conquered because we are alive in Christ now. Philippians chapter, chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. But our citizenship is in heaven and we, uh, we are waiting a savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control... He has control of everything, will transform our bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. He is talking again about the, the last resurrection. You see how he goes from being citizens of heaven even now. He's saying we are citizens of heaven even now, but we are waiting for that glorious day. John chapter 5 verse 24 and 25 very truly i tell you whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life has eternal life when now and will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life he has crossed over it is in the past so that means that we are already we have already crossed from death to eternal life very truly, I tell you, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Is he talking about the future? No. He said, this time has already come. It had come 2,000 years ago. So it has come now. You can have a, a, a new life if you're not, if you haven't been raised up with Christ. And then, still in the same chapter of John, it's amazing. how It's just like Paul was doing. Uh, how Jesus goes from the first resurrection to the second one. In this last verse I'm going to read it today, Jesus says in John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29, Do not be amazed at, at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice, the voice of Christ, and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to, uh, to life, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. Can you see the difference? There is a resurrection for life, eternal life, and a resurrection for con condemnation happening at the same time, at the last day. So where are we going to be? Of course, we want to be with eternal life. The only way you can be raised up at the last day for eternal life, it is if your spirit is a red in Christ today, if he has been raised up with Christ today. God bless you.